Hi, it's Doug again. I'm sharing information about family history that I've learned on Ancestry.com. And uh, in this part, I'm going to focus on one person from the Bush family tree, and that is Sarah Bush Lincoln. And just so, give everybody a point of reference. Here I am. Here's my dad, my mom and dad, uh, William Lieb and Julia May Bush. And something I didn't do in the last video <clears throat> is talk about dad's siblings. So dad had three brothers, Irvin, Morris, and Billy, and one sister, Betty. Uh, Betty and Billy have both passed away, um, as well as dad. But Uncle Morris and Uncle Irvin are still around, out there kicking. Um, you might notice these little blue indications um, as I move along through Ancestry. Those are what they call through lines, and it's tied to DNA testing. So when you see that, you know for sure that this is a person that belongs in your tree. So we're going to go back a few generations. This is my granddad, William Robert. Then his father, William H. And my two-time great-grandfather, Thomas W. Three-time great-grandfather, John Henry. Four-time great-grandfather, John Harden. And then we get to the generation where we're going to be spending time in this video. William Bush is my five-time great-grandfather. One of his sisters is Sarah Bush. They are the children of Christopher Bush, the first uh, Bush in our line that came to Kentucky. And Sarah, her dates are 1788-1869, when I first started doing, oh, it kicked me out. When I first started doing research uh, in Ancestry, I didn't think that Christopher and his family were in Kentucky early enough for Sarah to have been born in Kentucky. But actually they were. I found evidence of him in Kentucky as early as 1780. Some of his kids uh, were born in Virginia. For instance, my great, uh, my great grandfather William was born in Orange County, Virginia. But his, some of his siblings were born in Kentucky and Sarah is one of those. Chances are she was born in Hardin County but not necessarily in Elizabethtown. It could have been when they were still at Hardensburg um, that she may have been born. All right, and there is a picture of Sarah later in life. It's nice to have a picture of an ancestor or someone from your family tree uh, that far back. And uh, I think that part of the reason we do is because of her relationship uh, to Abraham Lincoln. Uh, she was his stepmother and living when she did, um, we get a picture. So recent trip to Kentucky on the way back, I stopped in Coles County, Illinois, to visit Sarah Bush's grave uh, and the Th Thomas Lincoln homestead. This is a picture I took. And as you can see, pretty rustic, um, not a big brick house or anything that you maybe would think you would see from the mid, um, yeah, mid-1800s. Um, Thomas uh, lived here from about 1830, uh, or in the 1830s, to 1851 when he passed away. And Thomas wasn't very good with money. He had several land deals that were bad, uh, where he lost money on farms, kept moving. Uh, people describe him as being kind of slow walking, slow to speech, slow to make decisions. Um, just not, uh, not you would describe as a real go-getter. Kind of let things come to him. Um, he would buy property and then not maximize the potential that the land had or buy poor land where he couldn't raise many crops. And so he just never really did very well financially. And uh, so we'll talk about that a little more in a minute. Here is uh, a marker that's at Shiloh Presbyterian Church. It's only a mile and a half down the road.
from the homestead in Illinois. Uh, this, this marker was put up well after uh, Thomas and Sarah passed away. Um, and you can see the inscription here, Thomas and Sarah Bush Lincoln, 1778 to 1851, that's Thomas. And then 1788 to 1869 is Sarah. Father and stepmother of our martyred president, their humble but worthy home gave to the world Abraham Lincoln. And um, this is uh, Sarah Bush's marker there in the graveyard. And in fact, this was, this was put in later as well. Um, I read in the biography uh, that I'll point out here in a second that Thomas Lincoln didn't have a headstone when he was buried, that all this stuff was done uh, later on after uh, Abraham Lincoln was uh, elected president. This is a picture of the church there. I haven't done research into the Shiloh Presbyterian Church yet, so I don't know if any of this structure would have been there when the Lincolns lived in Lincoln, or in Lincoln, when the Lincolns lived in Illinois. Uh, but that's one thing that I that I want to do is do some research on the church itself. Uh, like I said, this is just right down the road, a mile and a half from the homestead. Now, um, here is... A picture from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. So, um, the biography I'm reading right now is by a name by the man uh, by a man named Burlingame. B U R L I N G A M E. It's free online in a PDF form. Very well done. Um, if you are into history, if you're into learning about Abraham Lincoln, I highly recommend it. What I like about it is it goes into great detail about his early life. And a lot of times when you read biographies of Lincoln, it's, it mainly focuses on political life, presidency, civil war, that kind of stuff. And I really wanted to learn about his early life because that's where I'm going to learn more about Sarah. And this is where uh, Thomas and Sarah were married in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Um, both were widowed. Uh, Thomas had only been widowed for a short time. Um, when he married Sarah, Sarah had married a man by the name of Daniel Johnston, who passed away 10 years earlier. So she had been widowed for 10 years, um, Lincoln newly wid widowed. Now, back up a little bit, and I talked about Thomas not seemingly having this drive. He was a so-so carpenter, not a very good farmer, evidently, um, but he lost his father at at an early age, killed by a Native American, a, a Native uh, in front of him, actually, on their homestead in Kentucky. Uh, so you can imagine what that could do to a child. Um, and so not a real great, easy upbringing or um, a life for, for Thomas. Um, he ends up marrying Nancy Hanks and... Uh, a side note, they get married in Springfield, Kentucky, Washington County, in the home of Richard Berry. Richard Berry is a five or six time great grandfather of mine. And he is connected to me, not through my dad's side, not through the bushes, but through my mom's side, the Buleys. My two time great grandmother was a Berry. She married Bluford Buley. Um, and if you go back through her line, uh, it's a direct line back to Richard Berry, Richard Berry's house in Springfield still stands. That's the house where Thomas and Nancy were married. And in fact, Richard Berry was Nancy's guardian. Nancy had a tough upbringing too, was pretty much on her own from an early age, had to find ways to make money, uh, and to support herself. Um, and so... Now, not necessarily money, just support herself through having a place to live. And so anyway, somehow she knew the berries. Her cousins and aunts and uncles were around that part of Kentucky, and she was married in Richard Berry's home. So when I look at the Bewley side, we'll talk about that later on. Um, but I thought that was that was pretty cool. So Thomas moves his family to Indiana 
he builds a cabin there, not far from the Ohio River in Spencer County. Um, and things don't go super great. It's a, it's a really rough dwelling, no floor, no windows. Uh, it was a mile away from fresh water. Um, he cleared some of the trees, but not really enough to make a whole lot of money. There are stories about him trying to take loads of pork down the Ohio River. A couple of guys swindle him out of the pork without paying him for the, for the pork. They promised, hey, you're going to New Orleans. When we get there, we'll, we'll, we'll pay you for the pork. Hey, let's put it on our boat. He does that. He goes to New Orleans, waits three or four days. They don't show up. So he comes back empty-handed, just not doing great. Nancy gets sick. She passes away. He has two little kids, uh, Sarah and Abraham. Uh, and he decides, I, I need a wife. I, I, I have to have someone help me take care of the house and the kids. So he leaves them. He leaves Sarah and Abraham pretty much on their own in, the, in their uh, cabin, goes back to Elizabethtown. He remembers Nancy, um, and he had business dealings with the Bush family. So uh, he knew them, went back to Elizabethtown, finds Sarah, asked her to marry him. He had already proposed to her before Nancy, and she had turned him down and married Daniel Johnston, like I said earlier. This time she agrees to marry him. Uh, he pays off some debts that she owes in Elizabethtown, and they load up all of her stuff. She has furniture. She has dishes. She has silverware or utensils. She has a spinning wheel. She has two beds and a bureau. And so she shows up in Indiana, and it's just not great. Okay? Um, she's uh, in the... This biography, she's quoted as saying it was awful, dreadful, okay? Uh, 